Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. We have just had some incredible activity from the sun. As you can see here, look to the left side of your screen, boom shakalaka. That is a huge plasma filament followed up to the north with a huge prominence eruption from the eastern limb of the sun. This is solar coordinate system. So we just today, August 20th, 2025, had two huge blasts of plasma off to the eastern side where you have Mars and 3i Atlas, that unusual interstellar object, which is the focus of an immense amount of discussion and speculation at this moment in time. But what I mentioned in my last video on 3i Atlas is that it was going to cause disruptions to the electromagnetic forces operating within our solar system and the closer it gets, the more ionized and plasmified it becomes, the stronger this effect is going to be. It's gonna get really close to Mars on October 1st. It will be at its superior conjunction as viewed from Earth with the sun on October 22nd. And then it has perihelion right around Halloween. And so we are building up to that. Right now it's only August 20th and we're already seeing these spectacular eruptions in the direction of 3i Atlas. So if we examine this from an energy, information, and consciousness perspective, 3i Atlas is already in contact with the sun and the two are working together in unique, interesting ways that are very likely beyond our comprehension. And more evidence that these sort of interstellar objects and or comets flying close into the sun can alter the electromagnetic force field of the inner solar system comes with our recent 131 angstrom imagery going from August 19th to the 20th. Watch the bottom left part of your screen. I'm gonna hit play. Check out that interesting M-class solar flare that we had there from a sunspot group that's just now rotating into view. And so that happened before the plasma filament eruption. Watch that occur next from that location. There it goes. And then you have that promise launch up to the north on the same part of the sun. And so we've had a clear triple sequence here where we get this unusual solar flare blasting off from the southeastern part, followed then about 24 hours later with that plasma filament. And then just hours after that, that large prominence eruption to the north, but also still the eastern limb. So all that activity will be rotating Earth direct over the next seven days, but this is not the only thing that we've been seeing. There are a lot of things that seem to be increasing right now in power, size, strength. In general, things are heating up. Check out Hurricane Aaron right now off the eastern seaboard of the United States. On the left, we have our long wave band 13 imagery provided by the GOES East satellite. This is GOES 19. And then off to the right, we see our geocolor imagery. This is a monster category two hurricane. Remember it had a rapid intensification from a tropical storm all the way to category five in 25 hours. And then it underwent an eyewall replacement, allowing it to become much, much, much larger. Though that did reduce its intensity from a category five to three, re-strengthened to four. And now as it's grown even larger, it is a category two. Not expected to hit the Eastern seaboard of the United States, but definitely bringing some storm surges to those areas and also a lot of rain. So this is a huge cyclone which is mirroring in its shape and structure and symmetry the Milky Way galaxy itself, perhaps hinting just a little bit that these interstellar and cosmic energy codes that are coming in from 3i Atlas are going to be quite significant and perhaps a bit of a storm. And the cosmic influences don't stop there. We had this huge fireball fly over Japan just yesterday, August 19th. This was at nighttime, but it was such a powerful meteorite that it lit up the entire night sky with a dazzling bright white flash, though there are some blue colors in there as well. Check that out. This is incredible. This was over Sakurajima Volcano and Kagoshima City. And recently Sakurajima Volcano has been quite active. So is this a bit of an omen as it relates to volcanic activity there? That's up for you to decide. Is it a bit of an omen as it relates to these cosmic events that are unfolding in our local solar system? 
That's also up for you to decide. But regardless, this was an incredible fireball that flew over Japan. And I think there is some significance to this event in context of everything else that we've described. But returning back to that plasma film interruption, here we sweep out across the solar system with our NASA Space Weather Model for this event. On the left, we have our top-down ecliptic plane view. You see a whole bunch of different points there. The yellow dot is Earth, the center is the Sun, and the red dot to the bottom, that is Mars. So we see it sweep out, it hits Mars, also propagates off to the right of that near that E90 zone, and that is where 3I Atlas is currently. So not only is it sweeping by Mars, this coronal mass ejection, one of the most spectacular that we've had in Solar Cycle 25, sweeping by Mars, but it's also sweeping by 3I Atlas. And again, as I laid out, I think that 3I Atlas, due to its plasma disruptive dynamics in the inner solar system, is what is contributing to and or perhaps triggering these sort of solar outburst events. And so as it gets closer and closer to the sun, expect solar activity to continue to increase. It may not be conventional as in like we have a big solar flare and then a coronal mass ejection. It may be things like this where you get a sudden plasma filament to erupt in spectacular fashion that no one was really forecasting. Perhaps it interacts with these reoccurring coronal hole structures that have been on the sun. In fact, that coronal hole that's rotated by the Earth now 12 times, it will be hitting 3I Atlas with its high speed stream around the time of its superior conjunction with the Earth on the 22nd. And then that high speed stream is going to sweep by and hit the Earth around the time of 3I Atlas's perihelion with the Sun at the end of October. So there's already an interesting energetic alignment that we can look at all the way to October if that coronal hole does not close up before then. And considering how long lived of a structure it has been and how it's been connected with some of these very powerful earthquakes, the magnitude 7.7 .7 Myanmar earthquake March 29th of this year, and then also the magnitude 8.8 .8 megaquake July 29th of 2025 Kamchatka, this perhaps could be indicating that we have some significant earth shifts ahead of us for this fall. So with that NASA space weather model in mind for that film interruption, here we have the current position of 3I Atlas in our solar system on August 20th. This is today. We see it there coming in retrograde at 175 degree inclination. So basically just a five degree deviation from the ecliptic plane. And that plasma filament specifically, if we look here, erupted from the eastern limb of the sun. So here we have the Earth, the eastern limb would be here, and there's Mars, and remember that plasma filament is going out like this, and they expand as they go out. So that is certainly going to sweep by 3I Atlas in the days ahead. This will probably be seven to 10 days from now. Already we're seeing disturbances in the direction of 3I Atlas, and then if we go forward here to the end of September, beginning of October, we see that this is when it's very close to Mars here. And we also see that there is an alignment with Mercury at that time. So we have Mercury and Mars conjunct with the Sun and also 3I Atlas in an alignment there. So look for some significant activity on October 1st or around that time frame, I would say. And then if we go all the way to the 22nd, we will see that superior conjunction that exists between 3I Atlas and the Earth there. There's a little bit of wiggle room on this, but it's around the 21st, 22nd that we get that superior conjunction of 3I Atlas with the Sun as viewed from Earth, and we get that significant planetary geometry that I've been discussing. We see the alignment there of Mercury and Mars, also Venus along a similar angle, and of course 3I Atlas there, and we get this square formation. All of these planets on the other side of the Sun, Earth is the only one that doesn't get a good view of 3I Atlas, but keep in mind, we are seeing 3I Atlas, it's gonna be hidden by the Sun, it is also seeing us. Earth is very, very, very bright. Effectively, from 3I Atlas's perspective, Earth is in a full moon position. So we are reflecting a tremendous amount of light right now at this moment in time in that direction. 
And so there has been some evidence that there's some sort of light generation to 3i atlas. This can be explained by the fact that there is a complex dusty plasma that surrounds 3i atlas. 3i atlas is emitting unusual light signals. You have to consider the light signals that the earth is emitting. We are very bizarre and unusual as it relates to the perspective of 3i atlas. So the two of us are kind of looking at each other side eye at this moment in time. But the bigger thing, I think, is the fact that 3i Atlas and the Sun are going to be working together to increase solar activity to promote new interstellar and galactic consciousness here in our inner solar system and specifically here on Earth. But before things get really serious with 3i Atlas, that close approach to Mars on October 1st, that superior conjunction with the Sun as viewed from Earth on the 21st, 22nd of October, and then it's perihelion around the end of October, we have some critical energetic convergences occurring in September. Eclipse season is beginning very, very soon. This next new moon kicks it off, though it is not eclipse in itself. It is going to be conjunct in longitude with the fixed star Regulus. And then we go into everything. We have the lunar eclipse, we have a solar eclipse, and that solar eclipse is going to be on the autumnal equinox. So it's definitely supercharged. And in between those eclipses and also our equinox portal, we have this critical heliocentric planetary geometry. I've discussed this before, though that was a few weeks back at the earliest. But here we see Neptune, Saturn, Earth, and the Sun in an alignment right there. So this is active from around probably about the 10th of September through the 25th or so, but really most exact about the 19th. You also notice at this time, if we just go for a little bit, that we do have this alignment there with Mercury and Mars. Again, that's when 3i Atlas also joins in. I think that's very significant. And if we go back here, you also see this close alignment of Venus and Jupiter from a heliocentric standpoint. So in general, there is some significant heliocentric planetary geometry that's unfolding in the middle of September in between these two eclipses. And then we have that lunar eclipse on the equinox before then we get our first dose of 3i Atlas in probably a very significant way on the beginning of October going all the way through the end of October and even into November. So things are heating up. We're having fireballs fly into the sky. Hurricanes are growing to massive size and we're already seeing solar activity that seems to be connected to 3i Atlas, at least from a geometric standpoint. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Please support the channel by smashing the like button if you'd like to learn more about what's happening with the Earth energetically. We look at earthquakes, we look at volcanic eruptions, geophysical energies like the Schumann resonances, solar activity, space weather, cosmic influences like 3i Atlas, and much more. So, Please subscribe. Hope to see you here. We're on the road to 500,000 subscribers. If you'd like to more directly support me and allow me to help support you, then you can go to my websites, wildfreeorganic.com store to check out my natural leather shoes, sandals, and boots. These are earthing shoes. They are excellent. And then also all my all organic herbal teas and also merch is at earthevolution.com slash store. So hope you check that out. We are currently right now in a bit of a seismic break. The last big earthquake was that magnitude 6.3 Solomon Islands, which is when I did issue that earthquake watch. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you all in the next video.